It's a great pleasure to join you all for what's now the third innovation symposium, which Accenture and Turing have hosted together. Uh, it's always great to get together to discuss the cutting edge research going on in applied data science and AI, and in particular, how this can translate to real world impacts for your organizations and beyond. But first, let me say a big thank you to Accenture for working with us and putting together this event. And thanks from me too, to our Turing fellows who are here presenting their work and to all of you attending. I'm gonna begin by sharing a few thoughts on the National AI Strategy, which was published by the government in September. And in particular, to try and focus on what this strategy means or might mean for organizations uh, like your own. So with that in mind, I'll begin by briefly summarizing the headlines of the strategy, its purpose, and why it's important for the UK. Uh, after that, I'll share some thoughts on the opportunities it presents to you as commercial and governmental organizations. And finally, I will discuss or sow the seeds of what I think might be the kind of changes to thinking within organizations that uh, people need to be aware of and prepare for. So how did the national strategy come about and what does it hope to achieve? Back in January, the AI Council, which is an independent expert committee providing advice to government, published its AI roadmap. This made a series of recommendations with the aim of cementing the UK as a top place to live with, work with and develop AI. And first and foremost, the roadmap called on the government to build a national AI strategy. So the strategy aims to guide action over the next 10 years. It's not about concrete public spending commitments, but it is about giving a clear indication of government priorities. And this has been done aligned around three pillars, each with its own set of actions. So let me describe the three pillars. One, investing and planning for the long-term needs of the AI ecosystem to continue our UK leadership as a science and AI superpower. Two, supporting the transition to an AI-enabled economy, benefiting all sectors and regions. And three, very importantly, ensuring the UK gets the national and international governance of AI right. So for us at Turing, this was music to our ears as these three pillars are precisely what we think Turing is here uh, to support in partnerships with organizations like Accenture and yourselves. So our role as a convener brings together top academics, industry partners, government, civil society, all focused on retaining the UK's leadership as an AI superpower. And as a national institute, we work of course nationally to the benefit of both regions and sectors. And we work, we work a lot on the ethical use of AI in both public and private sectors with the aim of advising ultimately on standards and regulations that will enable innovation, providing guidance and assurance in products and services. So that's the strategy. But in addition to the strategy, it's important to highlight a more recent set of announcements that also give you a steer on government priorities. These were set out in the autumn budget and spending review. Now, one of the relevant headlines is the aim to fuel innovation and technological progress in the UK by increasing public R&D investment. Uh, this is going to go up to, from 15 billion to 22 billion by 2024-25. The target's been pushed back a bit, tough times in the spending review, but it is in real terms a substantial increase in investment. Where this lands specifically is yet to be determined but there are some clear themes which indicate the government's R&D priorities. So just in particular, in the life sciences, 5 billion has been committed to health-related R&D. The government has confirmed that part of its net zero agenda, there'll be 30 billion being invested in the green industrial revolution. And the government is encouraging greater private sector investment in R&D, including in data science and AI, and one exemplar of this is the expansion of the R&D tax credits now to include data and cloud computing costs. And that's very important and something you should take a look at. So although AI isn't identified against a specific funding commitment, the government has previously signaled its recent AI investment intent 
with some of the 6.6 .6 billion for the next generation defense and security R&D being directed to data and AI. Uh, furthermore, Patrick Ballant, so I'm sure many of you will know as the government's chief scientific advisor, you've seen him in and out of Downing Street on COVID broadcast reports. He's been tasked with setting up a new office, the Office for Science and Technology Strategy, modeled very much on the White House's similarly named Office of Science and Technology Policy. And this has an accompanying National Science and Technology Council that the Prime Minister will chair. So there's a signal of the importance uh, given to significant S&D strategy in the UK. So this office will drive UK strategy on how science and technology will be used to tackle great societal challenges, transform lives, and among the key ingredients will certainly be quantum, synthetic biology, and artificial intelligence. As always in the UK funding and policy landscape, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, but coming back to the here and now and my earlier point on the role of private investment, let me just comment on, on what I see as the opportunities which the National AI Strategy presents uh, to all of your organizations. The AI Strategy makes absolutely clear that government considers private investment to have a key role to play in ensuring the UK's leadership. And it does this by identifying government priorities in which there will be pr public investment but signaling to organizations that these are areas to invest in now to collaborate and to lead the way. So what, what are the two biggies that are come up? First and foremost, I think skills. We really do not have the capacity in people to exploit the data and AI revolution. So we've got to ensure not just that the technical experts uh, get it, but that non-technical employees understand the possibilities, the limits, and the ethical considerations of using AI in a business context. We need to invest in a diverse workforce of AI ex ex experts. And secondly, the challenges. A very important role for industry uh, in identifying and addressing the real-world challenges, both economic and societal, for which you and I together can develop solutions through AI. So what do you need to be aware of and think about going forward? It's absolutely clear in the strategy that responsible and ethical use of AI is vital and public trust of what we're doing is a key element in achieving all of our aims. So the list of actions under that third pillar of the strategy, which is about the governance of AI, includes the development of standards, and the promise of a white paper on governing and regulating AI. So I think for all of us, making sure that our use of AI technologies is responsible and ethical is therefore vital. This is not only going to be important for ensuring compliance with future standards and regulation, but given the emphasis that will increasingly be placed on public trust, it will also be important to us all from a reputational perspective. So hopefully that's given you an overall sense of the UK's intended positioning in this space. Do keep your ears to the ground as, as things develop over the next months and the next years, as we all seek to best exploit the opportunities in this very dynamic landscape. So thank you for the opportunity to, to introduce uh, this event, and I hope you all have an enjoyable and fruitful afternoon.